Good afternoon, Cross Timbers. Today is Monday, November 7, 2016, and I am Jaron Gaddis. In campus news, Tarleton's Baptist Student Ministry has begun its annual Mustache Wheel of Doom fundraiser. The month-long event kicked off Wednesday at the BSM's noon lunch. Teams of three spend all of No Shave November in a competition to raise the most money for missions. The top three teams avoid having designs shaved in, into their beards. Others will spin the Wheel of Doom and have their beard shaved on the spot. These designs include the Half Beard Chaplain, Civil War Abe, Lincoln, Let It Grow, and Da Chops. Mustache Wheel of Doom ends November 30th at the BSM's noon lunch. In regional news, St. Luke's Episcopal Church of Stephenville, Texas, will host its 61st Annual Mexican Supper tomorrow from 10.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. And from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. for lunch, St. Luke's will be serving tacos with large plates for $7 and small plates for $5. For supper, they will have enchiladas with adult plates costing $10 and children's plates being $5. Proceeds and donations from the annual supper will benefit the local charities and outreach needs. In the past, these have included Meals on Wheels, Habitat for Humanity, Hope, Backpack Buddies, Disabled Veterans, and the Food Pantry. And if you don't have time to go through the line and sit down and eat your meal, lunch delivery and takeout are available by calling 254-968-6949. In other news, early today, I sat down and interviewed Abe Abel Martinez, an advocate for the approval of a liquor store in Erath County, here's what he had to say. Tell me a little about the, a little bit about why y'all are trying to get um, a liquor store in e Stephenville in Erath County. Yes, uh, primarily uh, this goes back to November 2008 when Dustin Myron headed up the uh, beer wine uh, sales uh, in. Uh, Erath County for uh, off-premises consumption, which means being able to purchase beer and wine uh, to take at home. Uh, at that time, then only restaurants were, uh, private clubs were available uh, where a person could go get a, a beverage within town, and then, unfortunately, you'd have to drive home afterwards. The the benefit of having a in-store, uh, in in-county liquor store would be not only increased beverage selection of uh, various high-end uh, beers and wines, but also being able to purchase liquor in town and take it home for home consumption. Right now, you have to go outside of the county to purchase liquor, and so then the county is not getting the tax revenue from those purchases. Can you tell me a little about the petition y'all are having signed and some of the qualifications you have to have in order to be able to sign the petition? Yes, the petition uh, that is ongoing right now and it is due on November 14th, so one week from today, is for Erath County residents uh, that have an Erath County uh, address and as long as they're a registered voter, uh, they can sign the petition saying yes, they would like to bring this up for ballot uh, to let all of Erath County decide if this is something that they want or not. How many signatures have y'all gotten? Uh, I believe the lady spearheading this is Dina Dinius. Uh, she said that on Friday, we have probably around 2,000 right now. Uh, she believes the, the requirement is that we need to have uh, 2,500 um, or so. We'd like to get 3,000 just to make sure that people who are not valid and did sign the petition, um, they don't get counted anyway, so we want to have a little bit extra as leeway. And when was your deadline one more time? November 14th, next Monday. Okay, and then um, what do you think the chances are of the community having this success of possibly getting a liquor store? I think the, I think the, the progress is fairly good for, and the prospect of having a liquor store whether this one goes through or not. Uh, it, it is just something that uh, should be available, uh, I think, from the standpoint of if a person is going to drink, uh, then they, uh, it would make sense to have the items available in town for purchase to, to drink at home, uh, whereas having to go outside of the county to purchase it, uh, we just don't have the tax revenue uh, staying within the county. Deal. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. And now today's Texas National and International News from the Associated Press. 
In state news, recent polls tallied up during early voting in the state of Texas show, showed Donald Trump leading with 42 percent and Hillary Clinton trailing closely behind with 40 percent. Libertarian candidate Gary Johnson pulled 10 percent of votes and Green Party nominee Jill Stein in last place with 8 percent of the votes. Polls open tomorrow at 7 a.m. and close at 7 p.m. In national news, FBI Director James Comey abruptly announced Sunday that Hillary Clinton should not face criminal charges related to the newly discovered emails from her tenure at the State Department. In a letter to congressional lawmakers two days before Election Day, Comey says the FBI has worked around the clock to process and review a large number of emails. Comey said the review has not changed the Bureau's assessment from earlier this year that Clinton should not be prosecuted for her handling, and classif handling of classified information at the State Department. Trump landed in Minnesota Sunday for a rally moments after Comey's announcement. He made no direct mention of the FBI decision and continued in to insist without evidence that Clinton will be under investigation during her potential presidency. She prosecuted, she's prosecuted by a rigged system, he said. She shouldn't even be allowed to run for president. The FBI again investigating the handling of classified material on Clinton's private server shortly after she announced her bid in April 2015. Clinton had appeared to be heading for a sweeping victory before the FBI review, but Comey's announcement blunted her moment. Since then, national polls and battleground states have tightened through Clinton still appears to be holding an edge over Trump in the, in the campaign's last moments. In international news, the US official, a U.S. official described the Friday shooting deaths of three U.S. military trainers in Jordan as a very tragic incident. Three American servicemen were killed while driving into an air base in southern Jordan on Friday. Brett McQuirk, White House envoy to the U.S.-led coalition against the Islamic State extremists said Jordan's King Abdul II expressed condolences in the meeting Sunday. McQuirk says an investigation is ongoing and praised Jordan's role in the fight against the Islamic State, which holds territory in the neighboring Syria and Iraq. U.S. officials identified the three fallen soldiers as 27-year-old Staff Sergeant Matthew C. Llewellyn of Lawrence, Kansas, 30-year-old Staff Sergeant Kevin J. McRow of Tucson, Arizona, and 27-year-old Staff Sergeant James F. Mawardy of Kerrville, Texas. And now for more national and international news, we turn to the AP News Minute. This is AP News Minute. Democratic presidential nominee Hillary Clinton is expected to campaign in Pennsylvania, Michigan, and North Carolina on Monday. On Sunday, FBI Director James Comey told Congress that criminal charges against Clinton stemming from her email use are not warranted. Republican Donald Trump repeated his assertion that a rigged system is protecting Clinton. Trump is expected to visit Florida, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, and New Hampshire on Monday. Iraqi Kurdish forces are exchanging heavy fire with Islamic State militants in northern Iraq. The Kurds are trying to drive the militants from a town near the IS-held city of Mosul. And former Attorney General Janet Reno has died at the age of 78. A family member says Reno died of complications from Parkinson's disease. Sandy Kozell, the Associated Press, with AP News Minute. In sports-related news, Tarleton's football closes out their conference season this Saturday against Texas A&M Commerce in an away game. They will go into the game with five th a 5-3 record. In other related news, Tarleton gathers to grieve the loss of student and former athlete Mackenzie Cox. The track and field athlete was killed in a car crash Friday evening in a single car incident on U.S. Highway 67. Reports from The Flash say the student lost control of her vehicle and was not wearing a seat belt. She was ejected from her car shortly before the car rolled over. A further investigation is still going. Memorial services are to be announced. Today's weather is brought to you by the National Weather Service. Today's forecast will be cloudy with the chance of scattered showers and thunderstorms and a low of 60 degrees. There will be a south-southeast wind of up to 5 miles per hour. Tonight's forecast will be mostly cloudy with the chance of scattered showers and thunderstorms and a low of 57 degrees. Winds can be expected from southeast around 5 miles per hour and there is a 60% chance of precipitation. 
Today's broadcast was produced by Jessica Barrow and Krista Bowman. You can follow us at www.texannewsservice.net. And don't forget to tell your friends about us and become a fan of Texan TV News on Facebook. Tune in tomorrow for the latest news from Tarleton State University campus in Stephenville, Texas.